Father God, we come to you this morning, thanking you, Father, for allowing us to be and get up this morning, Lord Jesus, and enter yes, this congregation, Father, the sanctuary, and Lord Jesus, to mm -hmm. praise and worship your name, Father God. Father, we just ask that you continue to just watch over us, be with us, Father God, enter into this sanctuary this morning, Lord Jesus, Father God, that we learn to Put ourselves down, Lord Jesus, and just worship them to your in your name. Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father God, we ask that you touch the sick and shut in, Father. Those who had a desire to come this morning, Lord Jesus, was unable to make it. Father, we ask that you place your arms around the bereaved family this morning, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, we pray, ask that you continue to touch our calendar, Lord Jesus. Lord. Yes, we have so yes. much going on, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. You place your arms around the kids, Father God, the parents, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we ask that you forgive us for any sample things that we have said, done, or thought of, Lord Jesus. That you remove any negativity that's tried to enter into this sanctuary this morning, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, to let us just continue with this wonderful lesson this morning. And these are the blessings we ask of you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Thank you all for coming out this morning. It's such a wonderful day. It might be a rainy day, but it's a wonderful day. We all here yeah. this morning. Amen. 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 Going into our summer quarter 2021, it's unit one, and it talks about Jesus teaches about faith. Today's lesson one, June 6. Do everyone have a book this morning? Okay, we're going to continue on with our devotional reading. Our devotional reading comes from Ezekiel 34 11 through 16. Our background scripture comes from Matthew 6 19 through 34. Our print passage comes from Matthew 6 24 through 34, 25 through 34. Our key verse we read from Matthew 6, 32 through 33, King James Version. Our lesson topic for today is no worries. The lesson in focus, sooner or later, most adults will experience a season of personal economic fatigue. As a result of world economics, poor decision making, inevitable misfortune, or community supply and demand, most people will experience some kind of financial setback or inconvenience. Mm -hmm. Materialism is one of the hallmarks of modern living. Mm -hmm. Too often, people pursue money and possessions above the things that matter most. Rather than focus on spiritual development, healthy living, and meaningful relationships, many go to great lengths buying or even stealing things they cannot afford and do not need, mm -hmm. simply so they can impress others. The pressure to keep up with the Joneses and to be impressive only adds to the stress of modern living. This tendency to get caught up in the relentless pursuit of a superficial image can cause worry and insecurity regarding the practical necessities of life, such as food, clothing, and housing. Despite our notion of self-sufficiency, no one can build a family or livelihood without the assistance or help of others. Those who are not focused on the Lord, as their true source, can be overwhelmed by the business, hustle, and grinding. If you have lost sight of what is most important in life, now is the time to regain your focus. Amen. 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 Tonight, nice. would you read the lesson in context for us? In his report message, known as the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus delivered a message to his current and future disciples concerning what it means to live righteously under God's reign. In the kingdom of heaven. In the sermon, Jesus called his disciples to embrace a higher level of righteousness that they which was set forth in the Mosaic law. Jesus encouraged his listeners to focus on the spirit of the law rather than merely the letter, emphasizing moral, moral purity of the heart over outward demonstrations of religious pity. Throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus emphasized that being a part of God's kingdom required demonstrating divine character. Rather than merely keeping divine command, midway through the sermon, Jesus encouraged the righteous not to be preoccupied with this little concern, but to see their minds on pursuing the kingdom, trusting that the same God who feeds the birds will likewise apply all their needs. All right, thank you for reading that. Now let's look at our devotional reading. It comes from Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16. But thus is the Lord God, behold, I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeking out his flocks in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the clouds and dark days. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the country 
and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountain of Israel by the river. And in all the inhabited place of the country, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall thy flock be. There shall, there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountain of Israel. I will feed my flocks, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. All right, thank you, Sister Matthew, reading it. Now let's stand and read our key verse. It comes from Matthew 6, 32 to 33. Your heavenly Father, no one will have me all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 32, 33. Now we're going to turn this good lesson over to our teacher, Deacon Sam Newton. Thank you, everyone, for being here. So glad to see everyone again to be a part of another great lesson this morning coming from. Uh, Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Before that, I want to read verse uh, 24. And it's not a part of our lesson, but I think it's, it's very important for us to understand. It said, no man can serve two masters. For he will either hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now mammon, you know, is mean that riches or wealth. So to understand the lesson, we have to understand that uh, no matter what we're doing, that God has to be first. The lesson this morning, the one pastor, is no worries. Mm -hmm. And we know what worries is, but I, I just I kind of just love to do a little research. And worry, it says, is to give away to anxiety mm -hmm. and allow one mind to dwell on difficulties or trouble. Allow one mind to dwell on difficulties and trouble. Mm -hmm. That's worry. And you know what it starts from? A mind thing. Mm -hmm. And then it said, allow one mind mm -hmm. to dwell on difficulties and trouble. Now, when I was thinking about that, when you said, allow your mind, mm -hmm. first thing I thought was then, it said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so if we change our mindset, mm -hmm. we won't worry as much. I'm going to say that because I'm going to tell you, uh, in all of my years of teaching Sunday school and all of what I know, but you know how when sometimes I still find myself worrying about things. But then what changed my focus is to know what God's word says. I replace that worry with what God's word says. Okay? Allowing one mind to dwell mm -hmm. on difficulties and trouble. Mm -hmm. So worry comes from our mindset. Okay, Jesus was teaching them about the uh, condition, worried about wealth and putting everything else ahead of God. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I know I have fine people and you talk to them about church and they say, oh, I... I got to work. I got to work. Well, we understand that, that we have to work. But the scripture tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Seek God first. All of these things will be added unto us. Now, in our lesson this morning, it said in Matthew 6, 25 through 27, it said, Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thoughts 
for your life. Mm -hmm. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment, clothes? He said, Behold the fowl of the air, for they sow it not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barn, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? God gave us dominion over these things. Then he asked a question, aren't we much better than they when he gave us dominion? And which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, in the lesson that Jesus intentionally addressed believers' tendency to live in anxiety, mm -hmm. that's in worry. Mm -hmm. His message was to those in every income category who are prone to faithless worry. That's a key word, faithless worry. Mm -hmm. When we have faith in God, we know that God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Mm -hmm. Now when we worry, we need to replace that worry with what God said. Okay? That's how we deal with worry is that when something come up on us, we got to know what the word of God say mm -hmm. and have faith and trust that God going to do what God said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems we face today is that we live in a hurry up, get it done right now society. We want it done today. Mm. But then in, in our faith walk, God teaches us patience. Mm -hmm. It's not just give me the order and there it is. It teaches us patience. How to be patient for God to do what God said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, and see, therefore I say unto you, take no thoughts for your life. Mm -hmm. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Now, some of us Sometimes we'll be worried about something that is going, we think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it messes up our whole day. It messes up our whole week. And sometimes it pushes us to a limit where we go beyond what we should do. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I had a friend, and it's a sad story. So I had a friend several years ago, had to been way over 20 years ago. And I went in and he was sitting there and, he, and I said, man, what's going on? He said, man, I had a friend of mine who took his own life. I said, man, that's sad. And you know what stuck with me even to the day, he, his next word was, if he had waited another day, what he was worried about, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. So understand? <coughs> we worry about things when we are worried and, 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 and I'm telling you, we're human. We're served to worry. But you know, when we worry, we, we, instead of worrying about it, we know, pray to God. Give that time to God. And, and, and we don't, what we do is just, you know what, I, I, I sometimes I pray, I say, Lord, your word say it. Not God forget what his word say it. But I had to confirm to myself, and I said, Lord, your word say it. And it helps me. And it help all of us. So take no thought for today what you shall put on is not life more than meat, meat and the body more than raiment. Mm -hmm. Worried about what we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. Worried about what we're going to wear. Right. And there's a bigger thing in life than those little things. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4 and 19 tell us, but God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now supply all your need. That's food. That's clothes. You trust him that's paying your bills. You know? Because we can allow word to distract us so that we lose our focus on what God said and promised he would do. He said, Behold the fowl of the air. For they soweth not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barn, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not better than they? Okay, and I know we got some nature 
people in here because I hear some of them talk for them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I love to get up early in the morning and I go out there and I just watch the birds. Mm -hmm. I don't hear none of them chirping say I'm going to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> they just out there going about their business, mm -hmm. feeding themselves, God taking care of them, the squirrels, the rabbits, the crow, the bird. God is just taking care of them. And it seems like they just sail without a care in the world. Mm. Now, God gave us dominion right. over those. Okay? Now, if they can understand that God supplied their needs, God gave us dominion. We got to change our focus. If not, we'll worry all of our lives. Right. Either which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic until your stature. So you know, in other words, some people say, well, I wish I was a little taller. <laughs> a cubit is about 18 inches. That's right. Is you can go this way or you can go that way. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to add 18 inches this way. They want to add 18 inches high. Mm -hmm. He said, but how any of us can take a thought can change how we are when it comes to our statue. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. Okay? Is it now God control as a child grow to maturity, depending on parents for support and suffering? So we must, as children of God, depend on our Heavenly Father to provide for us. We see, well, you know, we have a lot of time. So, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. I, I, I got a good job. Job, go away. You know, I, I, I got it made. My mom and dad take care of me. Mom and dad won't be here one day. Amen. So then we change our focus. We ought to put our focus on God because it tells us he will supply all our needs Amen. according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So now that tells us right there that we got to change our focus, what we're so depending on, and put our focus on God because he's the one that can supply our needs. It said, now, the, thus, Jesus teaches that believers must set aside their focus on basic desire and craving to seek the bigger purpose of God's plan. Mm -hmm. Seek the bigger purpose of God's plan. It's not about just giving us what we want. We got to put God first and then all these things. All of these things will be added unto us, but first we got to seek God first. Amen. Okay? And then what we think about, it, it's very important that, that we learn to change our focus. Because I see people a lot of times, they're worried about this, they're worried about that. And then, most of the things that they're worried about, they can't do anything about it. <laughs> they say, the thing that you can change, change it. The thing that you cannot change it, you give it to God. Okay, now let's look at verses uh, 28 and through 30. <coughs> and why take ye thoughts for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you than is old ye of little faith? Mm -hmm. Now, when we go out and we look at God, and I love the springtime. I told my sister the other day, I said, you know what? I've got beautiful flowers in my yard, and I didn't do nothing but pull a weed every now and then. Mm -hmm. God done the rest. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at how God take care of what he gave us dominion over. Right. You think God would take care of what he gave us dominion over and not take care of us? Mm -hmm. How things just come into play? If we look at, around at God's creation, we know that there is a mighty God somewhere. Somewhere there is a mighty God, and we got to focus on Him and not our worries or things that we can't change. 
Okay? He said, and why take ye thought for raiment? Why worry about clothes? Promise a lot of us got clothes in the closet. We never took a tag off. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then some people were, I'm going to you know, what, what wear to church tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Take a tag off something. <laughs> you know? We, we lose all that focus. And I'm telling you the truth. I heard people say, I was going to come to church, but I ain't got nothing to wear. Mm -hmm. Well, they got on something when they're telling you that. See, we sometimes we use that for an excuse. But now he said, consider, look at the lilies of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. When they talk about the spin, they was talking about uh, spinning like yarn and things, okay? They don't do that, but look how beautiful they are. How beautiful the petals of the flowers and all these things. And he said, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Mm -hmm. Now in the Bible tell us, and I'm coming back to the scripture in a minute. To now, the lily is a beautiful flower and Jesus noted that even King Solomon noted for his great wealth and splendor in dress was not arrayed more beautifully than the lily. No other could surpass his possession and adornment. In Second Chronicle, yesterday I was reading nine and, and uh, ninth chapter, and they were talking about all of Solomon's wealth, his, his gold, his ivory, his horses, and, and all the gifts that were given to him. And he said, even Solomon, with all of his money, could not be arrayed as beautiful as the lily of the field. Mm -hmm. Say so he could not be arrayed as one of these. So wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now that's something we shouldn't worry about. And, and you know we're talking about the fowl of the air. And when we talk about the fowl of the air, I, uh, I decided I would just do me a little Google and Google some of the most beautiful birds and looked at the 10 most beautiful birds. And I'm telling you, when you get home, do that. And some of them were the, uh, the wood duck. The wood duck, how beautiful the feather were. It looked like somebody had dressed it. Mm -hmm. But God dressed it. God dressed it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Cause you know, when they flying, but somebody took a picture and you look at the beautiful color of how it was raised. And that is one called the Atlantic Puffin. You talk about a sharp dude. <laughs> Dress formal. I'm telling you, pull him up. The Atlantic Puffin, he had a, a, a white uh, chest. Beautiful. And behind him, he had a, a, a black coat of feathers. He would dress formal. <laughs> I mean, you talk about a black tie affair. Yes, sir. And I said, God done that. Why should I worry? <laughs> When God would do this for the birds. Yes. I told my brother the other day that that old peacock would be walking out there and all of a sudden he did. <laughs> he said, I'm shocked. <laughs> God done that. God done that. And when God do that for the fowl of the air and the grass of the field, don't we know that God going to take care of us? And God don't want us to worry about that. Our problem is that we worry about things that God promised that he's going to take care of. And we need to change that word into focusing on God. Mm -hmm. So Lord, you said, your word said, and I say a lot of times in my prayer, your word say, we have not because we ask not. Amen. Lord, your word say, you will supply all our need according to your riches in glory. Mm -hmm. Lord, your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto us. Now, hey, that's, that's powerful. Those scriptures alone should replace a lot of our words. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, oh, I, I was worried, and, you know, I, I didn't have any money, and I didn't know how I was going to make it the rest of the week, and all of a sudden, bam, bam, boom, there it is. I said, when you replace that word with faith, God moves. God moves. Okay, and then it said, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, 
which is today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? O ye of little faith. Now, when he said, O ye of little faith, that's because we worry. We worry when we should be walking in faith. Our trust in God to supply our need must come on our faith that God will do it. We can't just say it. We got to believe that God will do it. I guarantee you, every one of us in here got some little private testimony where God has done something in our lives where we have worried about something over and over and over and God had already worked it out. I know I have. Oh, yeah. I have worried about things, and then you know what? I, I took that word and told God, I said, God, your word said it. Mm -hmm. And God worked it out. Because you know what? When I, when I think about it more, when I, I was thinking, I said, now, what is seeking God? Mm -hmm. What it means to seek ye first, the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Okay? Anybody? What does it mean to seek ye first, the kingdom of God? Well, Let's what I'm saying, you know, as we had children, I'm reading some when we was children, you know, we didn't have the internet and, and all the Nintendo games. So we'll go outside and we'll play hide and seek. Everybody go hide and one turn to save their account, and then they had to go and look for the other. Mm -hmm. Watching that. That's seeking. <laughs> so if we seek ye for the kingdom of God, that means that we got to go out there and search what God's word says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, a long come with seeking is his righteousness. A lot of times we know what God words that we ain't going to do it. <laughs> see, we, we want to seek it, but we don't want to add the righteousness. <laughs> okay, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and not our righteousness, but his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. So that's what it is, is that when we seek God's word, we understand what God says, what God promised to us, and we come into a knowledge of God's word, and we replace our worry with what God's word says. So now, his special love and care for humanity should propel us to not worry, but worship. Knowing that our God satisfied, we can trust him to give us what we need. Yes. Now, some of us get mad because God gave us what we needed and not what we wanted. That's right. It's a difference. He supplied all our needs. Okay? Sometimes we want something that we don't need. He said, God knows what we have need of even before we can ask. Okay? What we have need of. Now, he said he will bless above that. Mm -hmm. But first, we got to supply our needs mm -hmm. and not let's go overboard. Well, I want to ask God, Lord, I, you know, I want to get plays in a hurry. Give me an airplane and I want to fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see what I'm saying? You see my point? Mm -hmm. See, sometimes God knows what we have need of even before we can ask. And through all that we're doing, we got to trust God that God knows and God will supply. Amen. Only thing we got to do is seek. Amen. Know what his word say. And replace that worry with faith. Okay? It's an allowing Amen. one mind to dwell on difficulties and trouble. Now, we can, when it says allowing, mean that we have the ability to control that. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been some times, I'm telling you, it, it didn't matter, I taught Sunday school, there have been some times mm -hmm. I was, could not sleep all night long worried about something mm -hmm. until I got on my knees and gave it to God. And when I gave it to God, guess what? I can go to sleep. Because word can eat you up. We were talking about that other day. I think these fellas going into Sunday school a little early in the week. Mm -hmm. They were talking, they were talking some good things about what it is, but what worrying does. You know? And then some say, well, I don't worry about nothing. Now that's good if you can handle that. But worry is gonna come to all of us. In some form or another. But you know what? If you worry and all of a sudden you transform that mindset and know what God worried, you worry less. 
or then you might not even worry at all. Mm -hmm. It depends on you to have your faith and your trust in God and what God's word says. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now let's look at 31 through 34. He said, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Mm -hmm. Or with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Now the Gentile was the unbelievers. Now we are believers. I'm not going to worry about today. You know. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about next week. Because today have enough of its own. Mm -hmm. So we go to worry about things what can we do tomorrow? What can we change about what's going to happen tomorrow? Other than trust God to encamp his angel around us, take care of us, and God's going to do that. Okay? Now, the Bible said in Psalms 39 and 9, 34 and 9, O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. There is no want to them that fear him. The fear here means to reverence God. Mm -hmm. You know, to reverence God. We, we you know we reverence our job. Mm -hmm. They said, be there at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They said, well, I need y'all to come in at 6 in the morning. We might not want to. We're going to try every way we can to get there at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Because we we fear the boss man. Mm -hmm. So we reverence God, meaning that we, we understand that God deserve the reverence for what he said. That's the fear he talked about. He said now in verse 30, the Psalm 37 and 25, the psalm is right. He says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Right. Now God will bless us. God is not like us. You know, we'll, we'll shoot your line. God is not like us. God's going to do what he said. He's going to bless us. And what we have to do is seek him first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. And we're not to worry like the Gentiles. The unbelievers. Okay? He was saying that the Gentiles, they're the ones that didn't know God, but now that after a while they come into a relationship with God but we, it don't make sense for us to sit in church Sunday after Sunday and, and just come in here and not activate what we believe mm -hmm. activate what we believe I have tried I have tried and I know that God will do it but I learned this <laughs> he will do it when I said do it mm -hmm. I can't command God I want it, I want it by Friday Nah. God is in control. He, he know what I have need of even before I can ask. Understand? Now, we, we don't live in that microwave society where we just say, God, do it. Mm -hmm. He do it in his time. Okay? Now, the lesson say, verse 31 repeats the thought of verse 25 as Jesus stressed a blessing of a worry-free living. Jesus speaks to the crowd raising questions for thought he will not seek an answer. Related to obtaining food, water, and clothing, the reference to the Gentile preoccupation with material things is direct reference that Jesus' listener would understand as direct result of not knowing God as the Heavenly Father. And you know one thing I learned? That a lot of things people worried about. I mean, sometimes we worry about things that really need consideration. But I don't believe that any of us this morning got up and didn't have food to eat. He supplied our need for food. Everybody looking good. He, he put clothes on our back. He done everything that he said he could do. He supplied all our needs. Now, if we worried about something else, it's beyond those things. Now, my point is, is, they, is beyond those things, if we cannot change it, what we got to do with it? Give it to God. 
That's the way it works. Yeah. Because, you know, he said, take all our burden to the Lord, he said, and leave them there. Don't tell God about it, Lord, I'm just telling you I'm going to fix this. <laughs> oh, no. If we take it to God, Lord, I trust that you're going to take care of this. I gave it up to the Lord. You know? And then that way I'm not allowing my mind to dwell on difficult and problems. Because I trust that God is going to, going to take care of it. Now, I'm telling you, they said the other day, and it's true, worry can do a lot of damage to you. Worry can shut your body down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One day, worry will shut your body down. Just, you know what, I'm worried, I, I, I'm, I'm worried so I can't eat. Mm -hmm. Let worry control you. Mm -hmm. After a while, you got another problem. So now we know that word is just damning to us because we allow our mind to dwell on difficulty and trouble, but we got a God that said, I will take care of all your needs. Yes. Not just your food, your clothes, and all these things that come up in your life that you can't change, but you know the key to it? Give it to God. Give it to God. Okay? Then it said, believers know that God is the source of all our daily needs. Mm -hmm. Believers know that God is the source of all our daily needs. Mm -hmm. Okay? Instead of Jesus saying that we should seek the kingdom of God first by continually obeying God's purpose for humanity, the purpose is expressed in creation to do useful work in the world, giving honor and glory to God. Instead of word. We must trust God to take care of us. Oh, yeah. Instead of worrying. Now, can we do a better job? I try to do a better job. Because, you know what? I have had a, 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 a round with us. Young. In the hospital with us. They come to work. And you know what? I have to learn to, no matter what stresses me, I can think about it. But you know what? I learned to give to God. Give to God. And then, you know what? I ain't got to tell God because God knows what he said. Mm -hmm. But I just remind myself that God said he'll take care of me. I remind myself that God said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. And those are doors that open to a blessing and a worry-free life. Yes. We got to put it in place. Mm -hmm. Put it into action. That's what we have to do. Now, it said in, in the 30th Third verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We talk about seeking God. What it means to seek God, to understand God, understand his way, mm -hmm. understand his promises. And what it tells us in Psalms 23 and 1, 23 and 1, it said, The Lord is my shepherd. What? I shall not want. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And when I think about a shepherd, I think about when we were boys, we used to go out to help these uh, men feed the, the cattle. Mm -hmm. And they would go out there with a load of hay or whatever it was. And when they go out there, and Brother George, I'm pretty sure he know about this. Those cattle know that he was their shepherd. Mm -hmm. And when he pulled up on that, they would have to come and eat. Right. Because he was taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? A lot of times he wouldn't have to call. Okay. They just knew he was coming. And, and when we know that the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We shall not want for nothing because we know where it's coming from. Yeah. Now, if we let our job be our shepherd, you can get a pink slip. <laughs> you can get a cut back. We don't need you. And then what we're going to do? Walk out of there and say, you know what? That good for the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. The psalm said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. It seed me the blessing that flows from us. Yes. Faith. It comes by faith. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can say it, mm -hmm. but we gotta believe. It. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes. God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, when you when you have some some uh, uh, early morning prayer with God, mm -hmm. two, three, or four o'clock in the morning. It seems like God is just elevating. You hear a clock tick and all that. You know that you're communicating with God. 
Because God will do things when we worry about things that we should not be worried about, things that we cannot change, we give them to God. And I'm going to say this, and this is what my friend told me that day, I told you he stuck with me. And he said, if he had waited another day, another day, just one more day. See, sometimes we're willing to give up too quick. And God is going to do things for us, but we, we, are, we, we lack patience sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I hear God say, I don't have the patience. But you know what? That patience goes back to <clears throat> what it says. How, which of us can change one cubit <laughs> of our stature? If we don't have patience, how can we change it? Well, I ain't got patience to wait to the mark. Can I make the mark come before it comes? <clears throat> Can't do it. <clears throat> so what I had to do is learn to have what? Patience. patience. Because things take time. God blessing takes time. And then it said, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall be thought for the thing of itself. Sufficient until the day of the evil thereof. There's enough to occupy our time today. Have anybody, you don't have to tell me business, but I just want to ask. Have anybody ever just went there to worry about some old money that was coming next weekend? Or start worrying about something that was going to come on Friday? Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. If you've done that, were you able to hurry it up? <laughs> no. You weren't able to hurry up, were you? But you, you put a lot of effort, oh, I can't wait to Friday to get here, you know. And sometimes we say, well, I, that, that, that's check coming Friday, you know, it might be different. But can we change it? Can we hurry it up anymore? So when we can't change things, why worry about it? Why worry about it? And one of the biggest things I learned is that a lot of times we worry about people, we can't change people. We can't change circumstances out of our control. These things we have to give to God. These things we have to give to God. Because the key to it is our faith and our changing our focus. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the word. You know, and, and I was laying there this morning thinking, and when they asked Jesus, Jesus said, what are we going to get for following you? Mm -hmm. We left our home, we left our job, we left our family and all this and that. So what are we going to get for following you? Jesus said, birds have nests and foxes have their homes. Mm -hmm. But the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Oh, <laughs> nowhere to lay his head. Mm -hmm. Now that tells me that Jesus wasn't worried about mm -hmm. houses and land and stuff like that. Because he was mission heavenly minded. Yeah. He was heavenly minded. He said, birds got their nests and foxes have their hole, but the son of man, which he was talking about himself, have nowhere to lay his head. And we worry mm -hmm. about things that we can't change. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, let's learn to worry less because life will be more fulfilling mm -hmm. when we learn to seek God first and say, Lord, I'm seeking you. I want to know what your word. There have been some things in my life that I could not have made it through if I not know what God's word says. Got to know what God's word says. Because when I know what God's word says, you know what I just do? I just spin around to Lord, what your word says. Yes. And I'm going to trust in your word. Mm -hmm. yes. And then one time, you know, sometimes when that comes that way, I can lay down and go to sleep. Because God is going to do what God said he's going to do. And then the Bible tells us in Romans 8 and 32. And I'm going to make him find it. He said, he spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us. How shall he not with his own also freely give us all things? Now he gave us his only son freely. Gave us his only son. Let me he said, now he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for who? For us all. How shall he not 
with him also freely give us all things. Now, he's going to give us that food we need, the clothes, everything we need, he's going to supply our needs. And not only that, if we live in faith and trust in God, he'll give us eternal life. Amen. But the way that we know that, we got to know what God's words say. I learned that people learn enough scripture to try to beat those folks down. I want to learn enough scripture to help me. Help myself. Then I can share with somebody else. But I want to learn enough because there's some time when I, I sit there and I think too long about things that I can't change. But you know what I do? I go seeking God. I, I seek his word and what his words say. And I'm a firm believer that we trust and believe what God's words say. We can walk around like a peacock. Mm -hmm. Or that land puffin. <laughs> Sharp, clean. Because our faith and our trust is in God. Not in what we can do. Amen. Amen. We trust over here when I got to ask our pastor to come and, and have some words. Amen. Amen. Any question concerning the lesson? Anything that you want to be clarified on concerning the lesson? Uh, I was intrigued by the aid of the Holy Spirit uh, that the words fell from his lips. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just sensitized in my mind that we all been there. Lord. That's number one. That's beginning of the word is circumcising our heart to let us know we can agree what he's saying mm -hmm. and sympathize that we can draw to him. Mm -hmm. He is the solution. And after all of these lessons that we are learning, ain't no way in the world we cannot accept that in our heart and do the things right. We can do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And God knows that. Mm -hmm. But he bring these type of that to strengthen us. Because mm -hmm. we all have been through something. And we still is going through. Amen. But isn't it good that you can be relieved when people refresh your mind? That things I've been crying over at night, thinking about headaches, and you just call on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, he don't put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. And things are better when you relieve from that. Mm -hmm. That's why we respect him. That's why we reverence him. Mm -hmm. To give glory to him. Because it ain't nothing that we done. And I'm so grateful that our young people can take it now. That they don't have to go through the stuff that they, we went through. Because people really don't have to go through what they go through. Amen. It's our disobedience to the word of God. He gave us a way to escape. Mm -hmm. People confuse this Bible all they want to. Mm -hmm. But it's true and it's real. And way our instructor design God creation. You can't say number why. Wow. How good is God? To us. Mm -hmm. And the only thing he asks for is your praise and your worship. Mm -hmm. He don't ask for money. Nothing you can give in the name right. If you don't believe it, go back and visit them two boys in the garden. Mm -hmm. It got to be right with God. And this is the place where we can come and learn more about him. Amen. And the series, no question is stupid. If you read something, you don't understand this place to give clarity. Because we're all learning. Amen. We're all growing together. We're just on different phases of growing. Mm -hmm. We want to be the church when he come back. Mm -hmm. Not worry about what man judge us by, mm -hmm. but what God know us by. Boy. He said, I'll come back without a spot or wrinkle for his people. And only God can do that. Because he knows your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. The teacher plainly said that he, he knows what we're going to say before we even say it. Mm -hmm. So let us come and worship him 
uh, this morning to give him all the glory. Pray that God let his spirit wrap in us to say a word to help us. Amen. That's what it's all about. We need it. The homes need it. The community need it. The states need it. And God have mercy on upon the White House because mm -hmm. they are our leaders. They need our prayer. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how it look, you know, you can look at us this way, but you know God going to take care of mm -hmm. So uh, let us uh, take that at heed. Any question concerning the Sunday school lesson? Okay, that is it. Not a question, but okay. I thank God uh, for this lesson today because it doesn't matter how many times you hear the okay. same topic. And you know, it's been preached over over the years, but there's that one moment in time where it just strikes <laughs> a certain way. Um, and you know, I keep thinking, well, I don't worry, but then the word denial came oh. into my head. Um, and it's, you can call it whatever you want to, but the effects are still the same, the headaches, whatever. Um, it is, and, and you said earlier on, um, you need to replace that that worry with God's word. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always one, okay, well, what do I replace with? What, what is God's word? And he already spoke to me that, and he gave me Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatever, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. So he gave me what to think on. Amen. <laughs> you know, yes, think about him, but sometimes some of us, you know, need a little more specifics. <laughs> uh, that was a great, uh, wrapped up in a testimony mm -hmm. and something that we can think of. He will deliver. Yes. And on time. Mm -hmm. And that's what God will do. When you feed the word, you may, like you said, don't come to it, but God in his own wise providence will show you. Mm -hmm. And that was right on time. Yes. And not only you, there's others had the same experience. And how you do that, you share that. Mm -hmm. Somebody that he can help them. Because we don't know it all. Mm -hmm. But thank you, uh, sister, for that uh, revelation that God had given to you. And it makes us likewise mm -hmm. is to trust God Amen. in a moment. I feel like I said, uh, I'm reminded of a young lady said one, one day to me, she said, in all my days, I never thought I'd be in this position. And I, all I can tell her, I, I tell you what, just keep the faith, keep trusting in God. Okay. What He has paid for you, He will continue to do it. Not only for a girl, but for us. Amen. Just keep your faith and do what is right, what he Amen. asks for us to do. Mm -hmm. And you change things that we never thought of. When you say, I was up to money for you, I bless you well with it. We see, mm -hmm. you do. Amen. 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 That's, that, that, that's, that's encouragement. Mm -hmm. That no matter what the situation, what condition it is, ain't nothing too hard for God. Now, if it's, it's nothing too little for him, mm -hmm. surely it's nothing too big for him because he God Almighty. Yes, right. That's great confidence. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let us keep on praying. Let us keep on in this word. Let us pray for our Sunday school. Uh, cause we are disciples. We are soldiers in the army. It ain't satisfied that we sit here and get this. You got to go tell somebody else the same story mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about we thank you bless you today so I just want to set aside our word and it changed the wish to guide us by your spirit every step of our journey <clears throat> this moment of our the day teach us to trust you always in all things in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen.